In the last video, we talked about a brief history of Flutter, a bit about where it is headed, and some of the benefits that we get if we use it. In this video, let's talk about the drawbacks or the current limitations of using Flutter. Despite the fact that Flutter has gained a lot of popularity over the last year, the framework is still relatively young and is still growing and being developed. The toolkit has a few downsides of its own. Let's take a quick look at them. Let's start with the first one. Leaving the optimism aside that Flutter apps will eventually be able to run on almost any device, currently Flutter only works for building mobile applications to production. Now Flutter is actually also available for building apps on the web, but Flutter for web is not available on the stable channel of the Flutter SDK currently, and nor does Google recommend using Flutter for web in production. Moving on to the second one, it is always recommended that you don't reinvent the wheel when you go about adding new features to your existing application in terms of code. Instead, you should try and use libraries if using them saves you time and effort. Now Flutter is backed by Google, so it is evident that there are many helpful libraries available for Flutter already. But you won't find every functionality as a library that you are looking for, simply because the framework is still relatively new. Let's now move on to the next downside of using Flutter. If you don't know what continuous integration platforms are, don't worry. I will be making a video explaining what they are and how they work soon. For native Android and iOS apps, there are already many ready-made solutions that makes these apps work with continuous integration platforms. Travis and Jenkins are some examples. Now there are also solutions for continuous integration platforms that work with Flutter apps, but the toolkit for these platforms need to be manually configured as of now. Leaving all things aside, the main disadvantage of using Flutter is the fact concerning how young this framework currently is. Now, it's been over one and a half years since the official announcement of Flutter for use in production, but the platform still needs to mature a lot. The thing with new platforms is that we are never sure whether the thing will catch on for long or will it die out as the hype goes cold. There is surely no way of knowing whether apps built on Flutter today will be existing five years from now as well. Let's move on to the next downside. Because Flutter is a relatively new platform, there are still many third-party services that haven't started supporting Flutter. Payment systems, Apple TV and Android TV are some examples of unsupported services. Many tools are now being developed and many more are yet to be developed. But it will definitely take time before Flutter catches up with other popular platforms like React Native. Coming on to the last downside, unlike native and other cross-platform app development frameworks, Flutter apps have their own UI components with the application and do not make use of internal device UI components. Because of this fact, Flutter apps end up being quite large in size. For comparison, Android native apps start from about 1 MB in size, while an average Flutter application is about 47 MB, which is clearly very very large. According to me, these are all the main disadvantages of using Flutter in the present. Now, almost all of these limitations will be rectified in the future if the platform sticks around for a while. But again, one cannot be sure about it just yet. I hope I was able to give you a brief about the current downsides of using Flutter. Make sure to like this video if it was of some help to you and subscribe to this channel to watch more from us in the future. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Tathastu.